You have been very patient. Boop. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. I'm actually really excited about this review because it's one of the most anticipated and potentially most controversial reviews. Today, we're going to talk all about the Koros Vertex, or as I like to call it, the watch that came in a suitcase. Since I posted a photo of this watch once I received it, uh, there are some people that are up in arms that I would ever review a Koros watch. How dare I step away from the Sunto brand or the Garmin brand and review the Vertex? Uh, some of the messages I got were surprisingly hostile. Let's be clear, I review products that I'm interested in, and I think that that you would benefit from hearing an honest, unbiased opinion about. The Koros Vertex is no exception. As always, I appreciate brands, in this case Koros, who send me review samples knowing that I'm gonna say whatever the hell I want about a product, good or bad. That's what I do, that's what I've always done. So I think this review should help a lot of you who are potentially in the same situation I found myself in. So Koros popped onto my radar about a year ago when seemingly overnight, every single elite ultra runner that didn't have a watch sponsor just started talking about Koros watches, promoting their coupon codes, and soaking in in those sweet monetary kickbacks. No question, it was a big turnoff. And my first impression was that this was some fly-by-night company that was paying people a lot of money to talk about their products. Kind of wanted nothing to do with it. This was also around the same time that Cento, their hardware and their apps were having a pretty tough time to put it mildly. Basically an increasingly problematic season of connectivity and update screw ups. A lot of distance and trail runners trust in the brand uh, was beginning to waver, my own included. That trust was being replaced by frustration with the lack of solid software and UX. So enter the Vertex, Chorus's new flagship watch, and my first dip into the Coros pool. Cut it out, guys. So this thing advertises a 60-hour battery life in normal GPS mode and a 150-hour battery life in ultra GPS mode. Uh, that's ridiculous. Also, a quick syncing app experience, uploading your data to Strava or other sport accounts, built-in optical heart rate monitor, barometric altimeter, SpO2 meter for blood oxygen readings, and more. Simply put, it's pretty much a near hardware copy of the Garmin Phoenix 5 series from a lesser known manufacturer and without some of the more advanced features, but still packing plenty of punch in its simplicity. Bottom line, is the Coros Vertex worth investing $600 in? Is this the next coming? And should we be looking at it in the same league that we would look at watch brands like Garmin, like Cento? Let's find out in today's review of the Coros Vertex. As always, I like to talk about the things that I like and dislike about a product. This is absolutely no exception. We're gonna start with the things that I like. Battery life. I have not experienced this much joy from a watch's battery life in as long as I can remember. And I'll be honest, that sentence is weird, but holy crap, this watch changes the game. Coros's engineers must have some secret magical dust that they sprinkle on the code because the battery life that I'm getting out of this watch is beyond comprehension. Just, I'm not used to it. When I received the watch and I opened up the suitcase, the watch had 88% battery. I plugged it in to get it to a full 100%, which took a couple of minutes. Then I started using it. 23 days later, running five to six days a week anywhere from an hour to six hours, I got this watch down to 4%, 23 days at full GPS accuracy. Based on what I was used to seeing in other watches, I found myself continually looking down at the watch to see if it was still alive or if I'd need to plug it in that night and expected to see the battery near dead. It really wasn't until the watch hit 10% when it notified me that the battery was low, that some feature sets began to dissipate or just disappear entirely. The light stops working, vibrations stop activating. Had I used ultra GPS mode for every single workout, I can easily imagine extending the battery life of this watch well beyond 23, 30 days of use. Just know that once you hit that 10% mark, the experience you get with the watch is different and I wouldn't really recommend it. Good news, once you plug it in, it charges to 100% in less than 60 minutes. Don't underestimate how freeing a battery life experience like this can really be. No longer do I feel tied to a battery charger every night with my watch or even every couple of days. Having the ability to go three plus weeks without having to plug this thing in, it's really cool. Simplicity. Listen, I love a watch with all the features, all the gizmos, all the apps, expandability, connectivity. But one thing that I can truly appreciate about the Vertex is just the simplicity in the user experience. You get to your workout destination, you click over to the workout mode that you want to use, GPS, heart rate connect, after about 20 to 30 seconds, then you start. You can adjust nearly everything from the watch itself. You can use the app. It's all laid out very well, very easy to find everything you need. And you're not digging through multiple menus down into a user interface, just trying to find that one feature that you want to activate, turn off, or use the app to have to do it. I appreciate how quick the learning curve is in using this watch, especially coming from other user interfaces. There's just something to be said about a watch that works so simply and packs such a big punch and providing you with all the necessary features that you need to track everything that you need to track. Software. 
So the watch's interface is clean, it's customizable, and the interface with the app is also quite seamless. And even more importantly, it's quick. The ability to change activity data or how it's displayed in the app, it converts to the watch almost instantaneously. Anytime there's a watch update, it also connects through the app and updates really, really quickly. Uh, it's really nice to be able to just refresh, it loads, it connects directly to Strava almost immediately or your online sport portal of choice. You might remember some previous Cento reviews where that experience took a lot longer. While the app is limiting, which I'll get to a little bit later in this review, it provides you with enough functionality to get everything that you need done, done. It's a simple and effective middleman between your hardware and your online portal of choice. One thing of note is that Koros is also delivering updates on a fairly regular basis. Since I've had the watch, there's been three or four different updates that I've put onto the watch and has improved functionality, speed, feature sets. Uh, it's nice to see that they're continually working on bettering their products unlike other brands. Cool to see that. Durability, so I didn't really know what to expect out of the watch. Uh, it does feel a little bit cheaper than other brands that I've used, uh, just in its hardware choice, the weight of it, how it sits on your wrist, but it's better than what you would expect. Uh, the sapphire glass they're using hasn't scratched at all. I have purposefully tried to scratch this thing to no avail. Uh, I'm just really pleasantly surprised at how well that the watch is holding up from a durability standpoint. The watch band itself, also with a little bit of stretch, helps fit everyone's wrist. The quick release mechanisms on the watch strap are working just fine. Holding up well, durability is a good thing. And finally, accuracy. This is something that I've talked about in all of my watch reviews or tech reviews. When you get an item like this, and especially when you spend so much money on it, trust is a relationship, right? Between you and your electronic devices, you wanna be able to trust that the data you're getting from these devices is accurate to the best of its ability. Really, you wanna stop focusing on the hardware and what it's tracking and begin to focus on your workout and just trust that the watch will collect it, right? If you remember from my Cento 9 review, the relationship with that watch started off quite rocky, uh, then went through this amazing honeymoon phase. And then towards the end, when Cento was changing pretty much everything on the back end, from apps to software updates, that relationship became quite rocky and and oftentimes the data that I would collect from the watch was highly inaccurate when compared to previous versions of Cento, Ambit 3s that I've been using, other people's watches that I was running with, all the numbers were different. Uh, that trust began to distill down to frustration. So the Vertex has been stable and consistent in my entire review duration. Uh, a lot of the workouts that I'm running, same paths or same routes, the numbers recorded reflected very little deviation from other numbers recorded. And that's just a good consistent baseline that we're pulling from the watch. My relationship of trust with the Vertex is actually doing pretty well right now. It does drop GPS signal from time to time. The heart rate data and the SpO2 data is rough. I'll get to all of that in a little bit. But otherwise, from a GPS standpoint, I've been really happy with it. Nice job, you. It's not all optical sensors and fancy suitcases. There are a number of things that I dislike about the Coros Vertex, and I wanna make sure that I address those in this review. Here we go, things I dislike. Price, 599 bucks. That is essentially the same cost as a Phoenix 5X from Garmin. It's also the price of a Cento 9 Barrow. While I think it's batting better than the Cento 9 and a lot of their offerings, it is still a very high price point to pay without all the feature sets from a lot of the watches from Garmin. A reminder that I have not yet reviewed the Phoenix 5 series. I can't vouch for any of those at this point, but I do feel that Coros has a hit on their hand only if they can undercut that competition more dramatically, like $100, a couple hundred dollars dramatically. I can't see paying such a premium price for a watch like this when the only two main selling points that I can see are an extended battery life, which is amazing, and the SpO2 readings, which are not that great. Also, I mean, I prefer to just ditch this extravagant packaging. Luckily, I'll be able to recycle this, maybe use it for some camera gear, but I mean, if this saves you 50 bucks, ditch it. I want this watch to be a few hundred dollars cheaper than either the Garmin or the Cento, and I think that's where this price point should be. Then it will be something that we can talk about in regards to worth. Which brings me to my next dislike, feature set. When you spend this much on a watch, I expect it to not only track all my data, but in addition, maybe cuddle me to sleep and do my laundry, especially when comparing it to what else is available on the market today. You expect to get a lot of advanced features, and we're getting some, but we're not getting all. Let me preface this by saying that this watch does in fact do everything that I need it to do, tracking my GPS, heart rate, elevation, basically any real stat that I'm gonna look at on a regular basis, uh, this watch does tend to track it. You're just not gonna get those cool bonus features that other watches at this price point are going to be able to deliver. This watch has made me realize just how good competition can be for sports technology. This watch has reduced a dramatic amount of frustration in my ability to upload data, which is really, really nice. But let's look at something like the Phoenix, where you are getting maps. 
and music and substantial functionality that I would like to see or would be impressed to see in a watch. I mean, if the Coros can start implementing some of these features, then hell, and we can start talking. For now, the Vertex does do what I need it to do, but it doesn't do everything that I'd want it to do. Display. So I would love to be able to customize the watch face on this watch more than those preset designs that are given to you through the app. Seeing a step counter, a calorie counter, and how much I've exercised on a daily basis, uh, that's not all I want to see on a watch face. I, sometimes I don't even want to see that at all. Just love more customization. I'd love to be able to get in there, throw some graphics or a photo or something on this watch face. Other watches are doing it. Why can't this one? Also, why am I not able to see previous workouts? Uh, there's oftentimes I'm on a trail and I'm like, oh, I want to pull up yesterday's workout to see what and compare this route or this climb and see what I was doing yesterday. Uh, you just can't do it. You have to do it through the app, which means you have to carry your phone. It means the watch always has to be tied to that app. Uh, there's just so many things I'd like to see this watch be able to do that seem quite simple through this display, but uh, they just not doing it. Speaking of app limitations, I want to be able to see and export my data, use it in other software as I need. I'm surprised that there isn't a website component to sort of graphically lay out all of this data other than just the app. I mean, the app is fine, but it's really easy to create maps, create routes, be able to upload directly from some sort of web interface to the watch. Right now, if you want to create your own route, import it into the watch, you could do it. You just have to create it, export it, save it to your phone, import it through your phone's app. It's just a multi-step process that could be eliminated with direct transfer. Also, give me the ability to create workouts. The run mode, not trail run mode, but actual just pure run mode allows you to create some sort of interval training, but it's not as intricate or specific as I would hope. I'm sure the app will continue to grow and give you more abilities and interface between the watch. But for now, the app is a bit lacking. And without that web interface or an additional interface to really collect that data, analyze it, look at it visually, export it, import it to other places, it's just bit limiting. Uh, and finally, SPO2 readings. So I'm adding this as a dislike only because I did not want to put this review together until I was able to truly test it. Just a couple of days ago, I got to travel to the Western States 100. I was at the race filming and I brought the watch along so I could take some readings throughout the day at altitude, anywhere from six plus thousand feet of elevation. My goal was to get some of those SPO2 readings and see how my body was affected by altitude, if it was affected. But the problem was, I couldn't get it to work. The watch wouldn't even take a reading. Basically, you go into a sub menu, you click on the SPO2 reading, it tells you what your previous SPO2 reading was when you were able to do that, and then goes right into the testing mode. Basically, it just kept telling me to stand still and try again, over and over. The only single reading that I was able to get was that my SPO2 was 99%. I don't think that's accurate, because I don't do well at elevation. And that was telling me that I was like, near perfect. So a feature, SPO2 readings, that you are paying more for in this watch, for me, didn't work. I wasn't able to get any of that data that I wanted to get. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe my body's weird. But for a watch that sort of touts this amazing mountaineer experience for those people who are at elevation all the time, how do you get it to work? Because it wasn't working for me. So why would I pay for that? But that's pretty much it for dislikes. So in conclusion, the Coros Vertex, let's look at the positives here, is one of the coolest watch experiences that I've had in quite some time, purely from a battery longevity standpoint, a GPS accuracy standpoint. I was just able to have fun on my runs and not even worry about my watch half the time, which was not the experience I've had in other watches. So for that, it was awesome. But without all of the advanced feature sets that other watches have available at this price point, I couldn't help but think, it's there, but not quite. It does what you need, but not all that you want. I also couldn't help but think that the coding that they're using in the user interface and in the engineering side of things to help that battery last so long, what if Coros just sold that battery code? What if they just sold that to the other brands and all of these watches all of a sudden start lasting 60 plus hours in regular GPS? I mean, if we got that technology across other watches, bye bye Coros. But they still make a killing on the back end selling the software. So who knows? What will we see with battery science soon? Regardless, I was hesitant to jump into the Coros ecosystem. I'm glad that I did. The experience has been good. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it. And I will surely be using this as a go-to GPS tracking watch for a long time. But let's get more specific with a caveat. Uh, a lot of the criteria that I use to really dig apart the items uh, definitely apply towards shoes. With the watches, I'm going to kind of change it a little bit here. Build quality. I think it's actually more solid than I anticipated. It's light, it's functional, it stretches a little bit for everyone's wrists. The sapphire glass is holding up great. It's a solid watch that will last. Comfort, the watch bands are actually really comfortable. They're removable, interchangeable, the colors can change, the flexibility can change, materials can change, otherwise the comfort of the watch is pretty good. Price, too expensive. 
600 bucks. I just think it's too expensive for this. Uh, a lot of the feature sets that I want aren't on it, and the ones that it does have don't work. So 399 maybe. Looks uh, is not really applicable to a watch. I am not a fan of this color version. I've already got enough orange on my body as it is, but of course you can swap the straps, color code the watch as to your needs. It does look oddly familiar to other watches on the market right now, Phoenix 5. <clears throat> so what you get there, you get here. And rather than talk about the fit of the watch, I'm gonna talk about a bonus, which is the battery. Uh, again, I cannot testify enough on the battery life of this thing just being great. <laughs> Whatever they're doing with the battery in this, they should sell to cell phone companies. That's what they should do. Which brings us to our final criteria. Is the Coros Vertex a buy, try, or a why? I'm gonna lean towards try because I think there's a lot of features here that other brands could look and learn from. Uh, it is an experience that I would classify as positive. The reason I say try and not buy is because I think this is too expensive but they do offer other watches, the Pace, the Apex, which give you long battery life, not as long as this, but also just same sort of data reading, GPS, heart rate, all that sort of things you can get in those watches. And I would encourage you to look towards those because you'll save hundreds of dollars and not be flipping out about spending too much on a watch that doesn't show you maps and doesn't play music, but does do what you need it to do. So that my friends is it for my review of the Coros Vertex. I'm curious, have you used any Coros watches? If you have in the comments of this video, let me know. Have you jumped ship from Garmin, Polar, Sunto, any other brand and jumped over to Coros? Uh, let me know what you guys think. And if you want more information about this watch, I have links in the description that take you to our affiliate running warehouse where you'll be able to get the watch, find out more information. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can get 10% off as well. As with all my reviews, the products are either supplied by the manufacturer or from running warehouse. All of the opinions are my own. I can say whatever I want. I am beholden to no one. The goal is to always provide you with as clear, concise, and honest opinions as possible. Today is no exception. In this case, Coro sent the watch for review. I'm happy they did because it's been a pretty good experience. And that is it. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash the ginger runner. Plenty of social media links to follow along with other adventures. We have new films coming, new reviews coming, so many products to review. I'm so excited. You're gonna get so many reviews this summer. It's gonna be nuts. And if you wanna get that 10% off coupon for running warehouse, or you wanna support the channel, keep the lights on, the mics hot, go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to all of that stuff. Ooh. That's it. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am. Okay, bye-bye.